Well, we're right back with Dr. Ogletree. Dr. Ogletree, now, you've been in ministry for how long? Been in ministry 13 years as a pastor, 20 years uh, just being in the ministry as being called by God. And it, you knew you was called to pastor? Yes, ma'am. Knew I was called to pastor at an early age again, okay. but I did not uh, respond to that call. Okay. But later, after God delivered me yes. from crack cocaine, drugs, mm -hmm. and from the street, uh, I accepted the call at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, God mentored me mm -hmm. again, uh, I can not say, under Dr. Ralph West, and mm -hmm. the Lord blessed my ministry and life since then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we went from uh, 19 people at our home. Wow. We started in the year of 2000 okay. at a school right down the way from here. And before we knew it, in three years, uh, this property came available and we built on it as well as built this facility in our second phase, 18,000 square feet, 12,000, uh, uh, 12.25 acres, and we have right at 1,000 members. But wow. God has done major. In that process, uh, Prophet Hall spoke about three years ago uh -huh. to, to me publicly about changing the name. What? And at that time, my wife and I and our leaders had been dreaming about changing the name. Wow. What's in the name? Why, why is it so significant? Well, significant, every time God does something major in the life of his people, sometimes there's a name change from Abram to ah. Abraham, from Sarah to Sarai. Mm -hmm. And God does a major work in the life of our people. Titles are not everything, okay. but when he changes a name, ah, cool. God is revolutionizing your life. And we need to be prepared for that. We went from New Hope Community Church to New Destiny Praise and Worship Center. And what does that mean? Oh, that means uh, we are everyday people experiencing a change. It means that we're not a people just of hope, but we have a destiny. Ah, glory. And we thank God for that. My Jesus. wife and I came together with that. Our leadership surrounded us with that. And all of a sudden, we saw our ministry changing the process as you spoke of earlier came to life our people became more vibrant doors started opening our church became a major worship center wow. we were able to see the healing and manifestation of god because many times people have stuck on hope and don't know they have a destiny glory to god so a name is important of uh, that obedience to god because God was leading you to do that. Yes, ma'am. You didn't just think of one day, you know what, I think I'll change the name of this church. <laughs> no, it didn't happen. God was really leading you to do that. God Am was I? willing to do so that. So he needed yes. you to obey. Yes, ma'am. And after you obeyed, you saw all of these doors begin to open and things begin to happen. Yes, ma'am. Is that what you're saying? That's what is right. I believe one of the challenges we have is hearing God clearly. God is not always in the storm, is not always in the fire or the earthquake, sometimes it's a whisper. But radically, we must obey God. Oh, God. And if we obey God, we can Jesus. journey with God. You, you said it earlier so mm -hmm. prophetically, mm -hmm. Joseph journeyed from the pit to the prison to the palace. We must trust the process. And yes. obedience will allow you to go through that. Ah. And uh, our church is experiencing a new level of worship as of this day. Wow, thank God for your obedience. And then the growth of the church from 19 members up to over a thousand and it, there's no telling. I know within that time, people have come, people have gone, great transition. Some people just moved on their time in that season. With right. Their jobs moved them on. But thank God for your obedience. Thank God for you being led of God, then sitting on 12 acres of land. What is one of your greatest joys in pastoring the people of God? Well, one of my greatest joys is really seeing a life change to mm. come closer to God. Okay. Uh, I am not judgmental. Anyone who's been to the bottom knows the, the power of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And to see people literally come to know who Jesus Christ is, become a radical Christ follower, to become a disciple, and to give up old ways of life and thinking, that's the joy that I have as a pastor. So many a times when God send these people in broken uh, downhearted, downtrodden, despondent, 
cast out. Big, uh, uh, Dr. Ogletree, you really can relate to it. I can relate to that. I think that's one of the greatest things about our ministry. Our ministry is designed for people who've been misplaced. Our, our ministry is, is designed for people who've broken, shattered, dreams lost. Mm. Our ministry is one that mends, that builds, ah, that it. nurtures. But remember, we don't want you to stay in hope only. Okay. We want to move you towards your destiny. Because you have to get to where God has called you to be. So you turn no one away? No one away. Wow. That's our ministry. And with loving kindness. Loving kindness. Sometimes people just need to be loved. Yes. Loved and loved upon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Just give me one. Uh, I know there have been many. But just one you can recall that have come to this ministry. Just the outcast. Lost job, home, career, everything. And now they're they're here with the testimony that God did it, and to God be the glory. Wow. Well, listen, it, there's <laughs> many for sure, uh, and I would just say this to everyone: mm -hmm. divorce does not mean your life is over. Mm. Car repo, ah. house foreclosure, uh -huh. does not mean your life is over. Drugs, AIDS, whatever lifestyle, God's grace is sufficient <laughs> and he can turn it around and we'll be 